Hey guys, this is Matthias and welcome back. Now, today we are going to be looting Brightmoor and I call Brightmoor the danger zone because it always seems to me that people are camping the office buildings or camping the three-story um, no, the three-story buildings, which I love so much. And it just seems like people tend to die quite often. I mean, there's very little times where you walk past Brightmore on a full server and you don't hear shots fired. Okay, so when you loot Brightmore, these five or six um, military houses are going to be your primary objective. Um, and the outskirts of Brightmoor are going to be where you're going to be looking to loot. If you're going into the center, there's not a lot of loot there, but it's very PvP orientated. So if you're looking for a good sniping location, um, or a hiding spot, or you want to get into action going to the center of Brightmoor. But if you're looking to loot Brightmoor, then you stay on the outskirts of Brightmoor and try and stay as quiet as possible because when you, when a mutant detects you, then somebody's going to know about it, especially on a full server. But on quiet servers, I'd say you, you're relatively safe, but out of all the towns, Pinecrest and Brightmoor. Pinecrest used to be the, the A zone, which will be in my next um, video. We're going to be covering Pinecrest. But Pinecrest always used to be the place where everyone just um, did a Clone Wars thing there because you just saw naked, you know, coming back to their bodies constantly. But at, at the, the current meta, I think it's Brightmoor. That's, that's the more PvP-based town. Okay, so if you're looking to get into action in the south, then Brightmoor and Pinecrest is your place. When you're done here, again, go around the back and then get to these three-story buildings. And what we're going to be doing now is from there, which we've just looted, we're going to be going from left to right and then end up on the other side. Just quickly going through the three-story buildings. Um, always start at the bottom. You, you, know, you don't want to come down while you're looting uh, because someone can be waiting for you. So it's rather better for you to be going up. If someone is waiting for you, then you know, good luck. You've basically been um, third person shot in the head or something. Because there are people in the three-story buildings that just wait above the stairs. And as soon as they see you coming up the stairs, they, they just strafe, you know, to the side and kill you. Which is very irritating, but it's part of a survival game. You have to try and survive. Um, so yes, these three-story buildings are a very good source of loot. Not always, but again, the percentages are about 50-50. 50% of the time you're going to find some good loot in here. The other 50% of the time you're not. And then, yes, again, you have to focus on the world items, guys. Like they are found on HK45. Okay, the world items are extremely important. I cannot stress enough how I have learned this through the years and especially while I'm making this series. The world items that you search have everything you need in the beginning. A heck of a lot of guides. I mean, the guides that I'm finding inside world items are 80% more. You know, 20% of the time I'm finding guides lying in the open. Um, but I basically haven't killed a brute or a spider or a spider mutant or any other, uh, any other way of finding guides. But... I've only done, yeah, this is the fourth town that we're doing now. And there's a few, there's a few guys that I've lost 
um, or thrown away because I wasn't close to a kiosk. Um, but as I was finding these guides, I just thought to myself, hey, there's a lot of people out there that need the guides, you know, that that are struggling to find certain guys and it's becoming frustrating. And I know when you want to build a base, it's frustrating if you can't find the walls guide. So I just thought to myself, I'm going to keep all the guides and um, yes, give it to you guys at the end of the series, which I have mentioned. But you guys will see how many guides I've collected now in between four towns. Um, and then right after that, you're going to come again on the outskirts of Brightbourne. You're going to come to the... Yeah, you know, the more the backside of Brightmore and go through these white um, military. I I call it military houses because you get a lot of them at the airfield as well or the military base. So yeah, you're just gonna scan through these military buildings as well. And remember, up here, I'm jumping up there for a reason. Okay, that is a very very hot spot for guns. So. Don't worry if you don't get guns. Always check up there because that is a um, a spawn location for guns. And then again, just scan through all the houses, but focus on the world items again. Please, guys, I cannot stress this enough. I mean, there's the red dot site in plain sight. But we, in the previous video, we found a red outside in a foot locker. So the world items is your main source of loot in Mistrader at the moment. A lot of hidden areas, so you have to look everywhere. Yeah, you have to look everywhere. And as you can see, we've already got four guides there. And... Yeah, don't from, don't forget the vehicles. Vehicles have got um, guns in them as well, especially the SUVs. SUVs tend to be a very high source of weapons. And yes, remember guys, I want you to interact with me. So um, I'm doing singular loot runs through these towns. And on average, I am trying to give new players an idea of um, you know what they can expect in each town on average i mean there are going to be times when you get less loot than this and then there's going to be times when you can get much more loot and much cooler loot than this but you know this is basically on average and yes if you if you know about any secrets in the towns um that will make you know that's exciting and that you guys never knew just leave it in the comments down below and after I've looted for quite a while, I always like to mix it up with something. Maybe PvP. Um, or just taking a break. Um, so I'm going to put my view distance to max now because um, I put my view distance to low when I'm inside towns, especially resource heavy towns like Hayward and Brightmore. And then when I go outside, I put the, uh, the view distance on full again because it won't have any effect. But we're going to go hunting now. Because we're hungry, and water is not a problem, but food, um, yeah, is quite a bit of a problem. So I'm gonna go look for a deer, and then get the meat there. So, just rearranging the our inventory a bit. So getting the meat, and now we need the salt. And yes, we all have our blonde moments, guys. So if you want to have a laugh, have a laugh. You know, we're trying to combine the salt um, with the meat. And then, yeah, soon enough, we're going to figure out that trying to throw them together like this isn't working. And we need to go to the crafting menu and then going to consumables and food. And there we can do the cured deer meat. I'm using both my pots of salt. 
and you can see there 30 percent okay 30 percent um food that you can get from cured meat of course the the amount of food that you get from these pieces of meat varies from wolf to dog to deer to chickens you know and various other animals and because we need to fix our water i'm not really in the mood to go look for water bottles because i don't have any i don't have a lot of antibiotics or um don't think i have any antibiotics on me so i'm just going to go around the back and i'm going to go to the swamp area on your way to um orchid dam to the left there's a swamp area there i'm just going to go there and I'm going to collect a bit of uh, mushrooms and then yeah, drink some water and cure myself with the mushrooms. So yes, after I'm done here, yeah, you guys will see that my water will be full and I won't have any poison or radiation problems. That's because I collected the mushrooms and stuff at the swamp area. Just making sure my food is um, good and I don't need to worry about my food. And yes, these um, little camping houses or... Um, I really need to get these words right. Guys, if you've got the scientific words for all these different kinds of buildings... <laughs> please let me know. I'm not from America, so you know I don't know what to call these trailer park houses or whatever they call it. but yes these units you get a lot at rocky ripple so they're again fantastic places for loot and yes as you can see my water is full now not full but my water is better and i've already collected the mushrooms and now again we're gonna skip the factory because we're not looking for vehicle parts and we're gonna skip the office block because we don't really want to die especially if our server's got a few people there and we're not going to really do the office block because we've already in the previous video we've already mentioned that the office block is more a pvp orientated building and the loot percentages that you get there the percentage of good loot that you get there doesn't really make it worth it for you to risk your life for that kind of loot so it's more more for you wanting to get into a pvp situation then the office block will be good because you can have vision um around you and of the of a lot of the town and yes you can get into a pvp situation quite quite easily the houses are more for um looting and everything and remember if you hear gunshots close to you or you hear someone close to you there's there's a few ways to get rid of that person okay the most how can i say the most scared scared way of doing it is going into a room and logging out okay so acting for yourself like you're gonna hide or something like that which is not very realistic because the guy's probably going to find you but you know out of all the houses that's one option okay the other option is that you can run and in a house you've got a lot of places to hide so even if the guy knows in which house you are there are still a lot of rooms to hide in and when he comes in you can you can try and get away okay run out of the house and because the houses are on top of one another it's very easy for you to get out of sight when it comes to the office blocks and the center of towns there's a lot of open areas so not a lot of cover for you to be working in and again the office block has got very little hiding places you can climb down the roof but getting onto a ladder when there's a lot of people around you is not always a good idea because you're stuck on the ladder so if someone gets his sights on you you're probably dead and yes the houses have just got the overall advantage on looting because of the high percentage of loot that you get in houses and the protection that you get from houses okay um the guy will literally need to have 
a shotgun or automatic rifle or something like that to make sure you don't get away. But again, even if you've got a weapon, like a hatchet or something, and he's only got a pistol or a single firing weapon, like a sniper rifle, a pistol, even a shotgun, maybe he's got um, slugs. Fall, you know, okay. If he's got buckshot, you're, you're in deep, you're in deep shit, you know. But it's still, you just, he can still miss you because it's pro, pro, close proximity, you know. You can circle him, but you can still survive a fight in a house if your opponent hasn't got, you know, automatic rifles, okay, or a shit ton of skill or friends, okay. But if it's on a one-on-one -on -one situation, you can get away a lot of the time, and again. When you encounter someone in houses, they are normally looting as well, about 60% of the time. So they don't want to get into a PvP situation. So, you know, you're just much safer in that situation. And yes, just with a new update, guys, if you want to get mutants away from the area that you want to loot, like that guy's going towards my house, I don't want to worry about him. I'm just going to throw the stone there really, really slowly. That's a really slow animation there but it's still cool so yes you can throw the rock to let mutants go to that area and you can even throw rocks to at you know to get people's attention somewhere else if you see a guy camping someone or you see a guy looking somewhere you know and you wa wa want him to look somewhere else just throw a rock over his head you know to the back of him as soon as he turns around you know then you rush him so, a lot of uses for the rocks. And, um, yes, like I say, you can, lo you can be fully geared, like I am now, just by the outskirts. Okay, we still have to go down these right-hand side houses. And then we still have to finish the three three-story buildings. Um, where I am right now. Okay. And one important tip for the three-story buildings, which new players might not know. When you go right up to the top floor, you might run into um, a closed-off door right at the top floor. Just remember, if you go a floor down and you go outside and you go through the window at the back, there's um, a staircase there, okay, um, that you can walk up to. And you can go through the window to get into the top floor. So just remember that right on my right, there's windows I can go through the middle window and go up the stairs to the top floor if the top floor is closed off. So please just um, remember that. As you can see, the door is closed off, so I can't go in there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to run back, go through the open window. And um, yes, go through this open window. Yeah, I'm in the top floor. This is a really, really um, good place to log out or, yes, yes, if you're outnumbered, if there's a clan up against you, then getting into a room like this, if you don't think you can run away, um, is a very, very good option because if you're in a three-story building and you hear them coming in below, then you can head to the top and then you can funnel them through that one passage so you can... You know, you can just focus on that one passage. And if you've got enough time, you can get away. You know, you can log out if you want to. But I mean, that's just if you don't want to die. Okay, if you're new and you don't want to die, guys, um, you know, you can log out. Me personally, I never log out in a PvP situation unless I get right out of sight. And I feel I'm hidden and I don't hear him. So according to me, he's lost me. Okay, um, if he's hunting me down, I'm going to give him a fair shot, you know, to hunt me down. Doesn't matter what kind of gear I have. And I'll fight, you know, because I want to make it as realistic as possible for myself. And while he knows where I am, it's almost impossible for me to hide away. But when I've lost him or I know he doesn't know where I am, then I'd log out just to get out of the situation. So in real life, I'm imagining to myself, I... Yeah, got a good hiding place and just waited there, you know, for him to go away because I don't want conflict at that specific moment. But that's all up to you. 
again going into the send-off town is not a good idea but you still you can still get guides and stuff here there's still a small percentage chance of finding weapons in the in the top floors um but again really really open guys really really open and yes i'm just gonna get rid of the not get rid i'm gonna stash the guides for you guys quickly and yes firing firing my guns is always a good idea you know to get rid of the the boring or the frustrating part of looting 500 houses you know or whatever the case may be and yes guys these are the guides that i've collected since the series has started okay i've lost a few i've thrown a few away and um, because i had a problem with um, space you know um, looting space or whatever the case may be but yeah at the end of the series i'll be giving all those guides away and i hope it can help some of you guys enjoy miscreated better as you can see i've got great loot i'm looking cool i'm a woman um just to spice things up a bit you know i don't want us looking at a man all the time but yes brightmore has got is a risk but as you can see the loot um the loot compares to it so it's almost as if the danger is worth it when you're looking at what kind of loot you can get and i mean this is a random i'm just doing one run through every single town guys so there's times where this could be way worse but i know that there are times when this can be way better like you guys know i found the ak in woodhaven so i could have found 80s i could have found various other weapons but i mean i've got a shotgun with a bunch of ammo which i'm going to waste now on brutes but i can use in pvp situations and defend myself <laughs> just love shooting off his armor well, that was nice um And like I said, guys, yes, it's not extremely realistic, but it's there for sanity purposes, performance purposes, optimization purposes, you know, and just so that you can get away. I, you know, I don't like the border because they got, you know, they hit the border and they don't follow you anymore. So you've got a safety zone with these mutants. Which for for the hardcore fans like me, you know, isn't great. But you can just imagine to yourself, you know, if the whole server can follow you. Yes, for a lot of people it would be fun, you know, collecting a horde like in The Walking Dead, and you know, uh, pushing a war a whole a whole horde towards a clan or a base or whatever. Yes, that would be cool, guys. But looking at the big picture um, for optimization and performance purposes um you know it's not a good idea but yes overall i'd say we're looking really cool um i really like the gear that you find in brightmore and yes it, it doesn't feel that long it doesn't feel that stretched out um, going through the outside areas feels a lot more linear than woodhaven woodhaven I was really frustrated with Woodhaven because it felt like there was a heck of a lot of houses to go through and it was taking a lot of time. But yes, that's the end of this video, guys. As you can see, we found great loot. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you're new here, please click the subscribe button because I'm going to show you guys every area on the map. And like always, just have fun. Cheers.